Hey guys, how's it going? Katsu here. And today I'm going to show you an upgraded version of the realistic procedural star field uh, made in Blender with Eevee. So let's go ahead and get started. And I just wanted to show you uh, the modification that I made uh, on, on the workflow is in order to make the stars a little bit more realistic. And by that, I have an example right here of the, the double cluster. And uh, for this double cluster, if you can see here, the brighter stars, they tend to be more uh, saturated towards the uh, outside of the star. And on the center, it tends to be less saturated. So we're gonna go ahead and, and try to replicate um, that, that look. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and start. Let me just make sure that I have my screencast enabled and let me just make sure that i have also my node wrangler add-on yes it is enabled as well so i am going to delete the cube and the light source and i'm going to modify the camera location and route 900 so that we can have a point of reference for, for our frame. Uh, let's change to our render view and add our shader editor right here. Okay. Let's expand this a little bit to the right. And let's change to our world. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and start by adding a Voronoi texture with a mapping node and texture coordinate by pressing Ctrl T. And I'm going to add a color ramp as well. So this will be the basis for, uh, for building up the, the star field. We're going to repeat this layer after layer with stars of, of smaller size. So let's go ahead and switch or flip our color ramp right here. And we're going to push black uh, up to around here. now. Also, uh, I need to make sure to play around with my scale. So for the first scale, I'm going to go ahead and go around 30, I think. That's a good starting point. And I am going to add, let's go ahead and add another color ramp. And this color ramp right here will control our color. I'm going to reset it by hitting backspace. Backspace, there you go. And so the first color ramp controls the size of our stars. So if I push black around here, it'll increase in size. This will decrease in size. And if we want more stars, we can just increase our scale. Oh, it'll have more and more, and also they're going to be smaller. So I think this is a little bit too big, so I'm going to just push it back a little bit. I think this is a starting point. And actually, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and play with the color. This is something that is different from the last time I did it. The last time I just changed the color like that, but it's, it's, it seems really flat. So what I'm doing instead if, is that I'm going to add a new stop uh, to the color ramp. Actually, I'm going to add two more stops. And I'm going to choose my, the darker version of my color, let's say an orange around here. I'm going to copy it, mouse over, and paste it. I'm going, I'm going to increase the brightness Something like that. Okay. And now if I zoom in, we can just play with our sliders in order to get a better result. Yeah, something like that. So as you can see here, this is a good representation of the way stars look actually or stars actually look, where the, the center is less saturated and, and as you go towards the, the, the rim of, of the sphere or, or the, the conference it's going to uh, be uh, more saturated. And this is what we're looking for, what we're aiming for. So now that we have that, we're just going to have to duplicate over and over again. 
Uh, I'm going to choose uh, this. So this are, these are going to be like our big, bigger uh, orange stars. Let's do the same for some blue stars as well. So I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to plug my generated into my vector. And instead of, of uh, doing a mix shader, I'm going to add them together using the add shader in order to combine them. Now this, we're going to see no difference because both um, stars are located within the same, uh, the same spot. So in order to, to see the difference, you can just move the location or any, not the scale, but you can either rotate them or you can just move them towards a certain axis. You can get a little bit difference. And instead of orange, I'm going to go with blue this time. And blue tends to be a little bit, a little bit less saturated, more towards white. Uh, this will be, I think, looks way better. Instead of going like a deep blue, although it might work, yeah, I think something like this, and we can maybe push this a little bit more towards blue. Yeah, we don't want to overstep it though. I think that this looks looks good. This looks nice. Okay. So now we have our main stars, and we can just move or or, or fiddle with the, the the scale and the amount of stars that we want. Uh, once we have all the setup complete, so that it looks more balanced. So now we have our red, we have blue, and we can start working with um, some white stars since there are. These are going to be like my bigger stars. I think that I'm not going to have like a big white stars. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to increase the scale. Uh, let's grab it. Uh, so let's join to duplicate this at shader. This will go, we'll plug this here. We'll duplicate this again. We'll plug this here. There you go. Now let me just make sure that I'm working with my... Uh, yeah, okay, perfect, yeah. I'm using my... I, I don't wanna be using my integrated graphics card. I wanna be using my GP for this. Okay, so let's again plug our generated into the vector for this too well and now that we have this so these have uh these two have a scale of 30 we can double this perhaps and move it to let's say 60. there you go and now we can start adding maybe some uh, white stars as well with a, the same scale so we can just double this duplicate this I'm going to plot that generator into my vector and I'm going to create another add shader here. This. And so this is going, these are going to be my white stars. So I don't really need this color ramp right here. I can just delete it. And I can plug the color directly. And since they share the same location and rotation as this one right here, I'm gonna uh, move it again a little bit. So I don't know, maybe around here perhaps, there you go. Okay. And you know what, maybe I will create another color ramp now that I'm seeing it. This looks a little bit like grayish, if that's the word. So I wanna push the white a little bit more. That maybe. I think this looks this looks good. Or even I could um, I could add another stop perhaps, and we can make this like a little bit like uh, blue. This is the other way around here. So just give it a little hint of of color. 
so that it's not completely like um, like gray or white. And so now we have 60 and 30. And now uh, I would go ahead and double this, but only the white stars since they're going to be like the more dimmer stars. Uh, I can have them be like white. I don't, and, and this, again, this is going to depend, this is going to be the, the depending entirely up to you and, and your taste. Um, but I think that since we're now going to start working with the more dimmer stars, uh, we, I don't think that color is going to be like really necessary. So now instead of 60, let's double it and go for 120. There you go, looking nice. And I'm going to rip Repeat the procedure again, and this time we're gonna go for I don't know what could be in a good number, perhaps 180. And again, this is going to be uh, up to your taste as, as um, small as you want. This is going to depend on on um, the type of background that you're that you're looking to create. So. Uh, you're going to go as high as you want. So now we have like 180 and I think I might want to do a last one. Just one last one. Yeah, just to make sure that we have a, a really dense um, star field. Go. Connect it again, and instead of 180, we might go, I don't know, 320 perhaps? There you go. Nice. Now this, I think, looks much better. Oh. Uh, let me change to, what can we do? Going to, perhaps, I'm doing it the other way around, but I don't care. So we're going to do this, um, move this to the bottom, and I'm just Viewport and there you go. So as you can see here, we have a really dense uh, star field. And if I go into my frame and, and I zoom in, the stars now look, uh, I think, much better than they used to uh, look before. And um, the good thing about this uh, this way of uh, or, or this procedural uh, realistic. Uh, Starfield is that if you go for instance you can since we are adding backgrounds to everything we can adjust the power if, so if, if I want let's say that the, uh, this red star is to be brighter I can just increase the, the strength and this will make them much brighter and actually I can enable let's say bloom for instance this will look real neat uh, I don't think ambient pollution will do anything uh, but bloom will so we can do like, this can be like 10, this can be like five. We can have this, these two like at three. There you go. And the rest of them, you might want to have these at five. So let's move here. There you go. So it, I think this, this looks real nice. And if 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 we let's let's render now, um, I think that we might want to increase the, uh, the render. Let's say one twenty. Let's see how this works. So uh, render image. Let's give it a minute. And I'm going to add also some background nebula. Uh, so yeah. So unless I, I zoom in, like we will see the pixelated because of, of the amount of samples. But I think that this looks pretty good. And this obviously looks perfect. You can use it as, as a background for another scene that you want to create. Um, and I'm going to end, and this is the, I did the same last time, uh, creating some nebulosity and making sure that the sky is not entirely black because it isn't. In order to create the nebulosity, um, you can add some noise texture. Map it again and let's plug it in. Uh, oh, I have it direct. There you go. 
So we have a noise texture. I'm going to add a color ramp here. This is not a color ramp. This is a color ramp. And let me go ahead and plug this directly to my output so that we can. I think I want to add the shape. And let's duplicate a background here. So plug our color to color, and this background will go for your little boy here. There you go. Okay, so let's see what this does. Let's give it a minute. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do is that we're going to bring our lighter somewhere around here. Let's use the scale. Again, this is up to your taste. Um, eight. Uh, does this might work? Add some detail. Uh, maybe I would want to the roughness around here. Maybe. Yeah, I think this could work. And then let's change the color of the uh, background. Here we will depend entirely on what you want. You get like, uh, let's say that Barnard's loop or something like that that looks like a little red or California nebula or something like that if, you, if, if that's where you're looking or that's where you're after um, and then what you can do is just the magic touch we're going to just add like 0 0.01 maybe that was too much 0.1 yeah that seems nice so it just a really subtle effect that will add a lot of depth and texture and if, if you want you you can duplicate this and maybe add another layer of of uh of noise texture for another nebulosity or for a different color and and you can just play around with that as well this will that, that will get pretty good results and finally the other thing that i was mentioning is that the the, the, the sky or the background is not supposed to be like completely black and if we can see here it's it's not like zero black so we can just add a background around here let's plug it here and here we can just add a little bit like perhaps not entirely black maybe around this maybe there you go so let's go ahead and change it to our shading there you go so that's our star field let's go ahead and render this with the framing that we have there we have it that's the procedurally generated realistic star field uh, with EV using only nodes um, I hope you like this tutorial if you did just leave a comment and I'll see you soon thanks for watching again I'm Kaetsu cheers